Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to solve a problem with using OpenType inside of Photoshop. Well here's the problem. I have a document here in Bridge that was created with Adobe InDesign. And I did this document for a friend of mine and I kind of created like a logo for her that she really liked. But here's the problem. She also wanted to start using that exact same look and feel on other documents such as this Photoshop comp card that we did. So let me show you the document in InDesign. Let's pop over to InDesign and take a look at it. And basically all this is, is this is a uh, nice typeface called Zafino. So let's uh, click on it. Zafino Extra LT Pro. And that particular typeface is an open type font. So what I did was I altered the default R and the default A using the glyphs panel. So let me show you. I'm going to highlight the letter R here, the capital R. And I'm in InDesign. I'm going to go up to the glyphs panel inside of InDesign. And because I have it set for alternates for selection, I get to see all the other R's that are a part of that particular font. So, for example, this would be the R that we would have gotten by default, just by choosing that font and typing a capital R. Well, I always preach that if you can make it different or make it stand out from your competition who may be using the exact same font but just not know about the open type features, why not? So in this case, I chose that particular R, and again, the customer, my friend, really liked it. So, for example, same thing on the letter A here. These are all the various letter A's that come as a part of that font, and I happen to pick, instead of the standard one, I picked... Oh, if I can find it again, that one. So that gave me a totally different look and feel for the R and the A in her logo. Now, here's the problem. When we pop over to back to Bridge and we open up this comp card, well, I just typed it out using the same font because although Photoshop supports OpenType, it doesn't have the user interface or the UI to get to a glyphs panel. There's no way for me to pick the custom R or the custom A that's in the font. So the font's there, the R's there, the A's there. It's just there's no way to get to it in Photoshop to enable it. So I thought, well, what if I just go back to InDesign and copy and paste? So I tried that. And here, let me show you what happens. I'm going to pop back over to InDesign. I'm going to just select that logo there. And we'll just copy it, come back to Photoshop, I'll grab my type tool, Let's see, grab the type tool here, and we'll just click right over here, and paste. And what I get pasted, unfortunately, is whatever my default font was. So even if I were to go in now and change it to that exact font, Zafino here, if I can find it, there it is. I can change it, but again, I don't have the ability to go in and make the custom R and the custom A the way I want because I have no access to the open type glyphs panel here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get rid of that, and I'm going to show you my way of working around this particular problem. So we're going to use another product that does have a glyphs panel and does work directly with Photoshop, it's called Illustrator. So let's go over and go to Adobe Illustrator CS4. And in Illustrator, I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new print document. And when I create the print document, of course, it's going to come up uh, blank. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and, by the way, I'm working in CMYK for this document, so that's fine. I'll click OK. And then I'll just grab my type tool. And we'll just click the cursor there. And I'm going to go ahead and just type out um, what I want her logo to say or what I want on this comp card. And, oops, typo there. <laughs> Two typos. And now we'll just go ahead and select that. We'll make it nice and big so we can see it. And there it is. So we've got the logo there. Now the next thing I need to do, of course, is change the font. So since I have access, of course, to the exact same fonts that are installed on my system, I can go and choose, if I get down to the letter Z's there, the Zafino Pro Extra. And we can, of course, make that even a little bit bigger. All right, so now, 
here's the thing. I want to go ahead and change that R. And here, let's go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. I want to change that R to the R that we saw inside of uh, InDesign. If I can get it selected here. Let's grab the type tool once again. Oops. Oh, it looks like I accidentally locked it here. Let's go ahead and undo, undo, undo lock. There we go. And let's go ahead and grab that R again. And now that I've got the R selected, I'm going to go up to the type menu and there it is. The same glyphs panel that we saw in InDesign. So now, same thing, I'll do alternates for current selection, and voila, there are all my fancy R's and, this, and swashes in this particular font. I can go ahead and choose the ones I want, so I'll grab the letter A, same thing, I can grab that fancy letter A that I like, and I've got my text the way I want it. So now, I'll close the glyphs panel, and the next thing I want to do is go ahead and now get this over to Photoshop. But I'm not going to do a copy and paste because that may or may not work. What I want to do is do something that I know will work. And that is going up to the file menu and choosing an export because Illustrator can export directly to a Photoshop PSD file. An editable Photoshop file. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and save that out onto the desktop here, or actually I can save it to the same folder we were looking at in Bridge. And we'll just uh, we'll just call this Renata Logo. And again, the key here is that we're exporting this from Illustrator as a Photoshop native file. So now we'll go ahead and choose Export. I'll get an Export dialog box. I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, high resolution, because that's what we're working on on the other document. And the main thing here is that I want to write the layers and even though I'm choosing preserve text editability I really won't be able to edit it in Photoshop because again same thing those characters just aren't accessible but by preserving this I am keeping it vector which is my main goal here so now let's click OK and that will export it out as a Photoshop file and now I can pop back over to bridge which there it is in bridge and I can of course just double click on it and now we'll open it up inside of Photoshop. And again, I, it's text, although I can't really edit it here because of the uh, special characters I can't access. It is still a vector uh, layer that I can now, here, if we uh, grab the layers panel here, it shows it as a standard text layer. So it is, it's got all the attributes of a text layer. I just can't edit what it says because of the missing glyphs panel. But that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and now grab this layer and drag it up to my tabbed interface to my other document pops open and then just drag it right into that document and there we are. It's almost even the exact size I need. Okay, so now the question becomes you've done that. You've got it where you wanted it. What do you want to do next? Well, I'm going to go ahead and grab my type tool and we'll just go ahead and highlight that text because again, it is text. And now I can grab my... Uh, my color picker and I can grab the exact same colors that were used in the previous logo. So we'll just go ahead and uh, change the word makeup here to get the right color. We'll grab that lighter pink color there and again we'll grab the uh, artist on the end and do the exact same thing. So we'll grab the, uh, the purple there and get the exact same colors that we had and also um, if we need it to do any special effects, I can't remember if the other one had special effects on it or not. Um, it, this one didn't, but I did have an earlier version that did. So the earlier version had a drop shadow and a bevel and emboss. So let's go ahead and kill the one that we don't want. Now we're left with the one that we do want. We'll go ahead and drag that into place. And the next thing I want to do is go ahead, and again, because it is a standard text layer, I can go ahead and run some effects on it. So I can put a standard drop shadow on there. And again, we can pull that drop shadow up around any direction we want. And we'll just go ahead and pull it up a little bit. And again, we're, uh, we're going to go ahead and add a bevel and emboss while we're there. Click OK, and we're good to go. So that is how I can take advantage uh, and of course I can make it larger and do all kinds of other things but that is how I can take advantage of open type glyphs 
inside of Photoshop, keeping them vector without necessarily having the glyphs panel to create them in the first place. So I can do everything that I would normally do to this. It's vector, it's text, it's wonderful. I can print this out now and be ready to go. Now, if you want to check out my friend's website, uh, I encourage you to go do that at renata.renatamua.com. She would love it if you came and paid her a visit. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.